Hey, welcome once again. What you're gonna see in this video is the past and the present, and the past in the present. The reason for doing the past is I thought you might enjoy seeing how Lucy and Desi Arnaz once lived in Chatsworth, California, in the home they called the Ranch House. So to do that, I had to go into the past, all the way back to the 40s and 50s. And I got thinking, wouldn't you enjoy seeing where everything was back then as it is today? So I hope you enjoy this little travel down Devonshire Boulevard, leaving Reseda Boulevard until we hit Corbin Avenue. I'll explain on the way, let's do this. Before there was this, or even this, there was this. This story is about Lucille Ball and the homes she lived in. When she left Jamestown, New York and came to live in Los Angeles, I really hope you're gonna enjoy this video. What you're about to see is a travel down Devonshire Boulevard going west. We're leaving Reseda Boulevard there in the background and we're heading towards Corbin. I use the washes and the drainage system as permanent markers because they're the same as they were back in the 40s as today. And I recreated that same black and white driving down Devonshire Boulevard going west towards the ranch house. You've already seen the markers for the Elysio wash as well as the those two trees in the background. You can see we're leaving the Northridge Little League baseball field. We're about to cross over Wilbur Avenue. It's one of the first streets west of Reseda Boulevard. Now we'll take a look at what it would look like in the 40s. And as you can see, there was nothing there. Okay, I think you know what I was trying to do here. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what you're about to see. This story is mainly going to be about Lucille, her journey from Jamestown, New York to Los Angeles, and the homes she lived in along the way. But that's not all that I'm going to cover in this story. I'm also going to show the ranch house when it was first built, even before Lucy and Desi bought it. Then back in time with a quick visit to the house Lucy grew up in, in Jamestown, then places she lived in LA. Then we will travel back in time to when they both lived in the ranch house. You'll actually see the transformation of the houses of today turn into the property of yesteryear. And we'll tour the outside property property and identify where many of the pictures were taken on the property. Then we'll travel back to today and reminisce with our ground level walk around as we will see what's there today and see where everything was. Lastly, we will take a quick look at the homes after leaving the ranch house including Palm Springs, Beverly Hills, and the Del Mar home. I hope you'll enjoy this story. I hope it encourages you to hit the like button. Maybe even subscribe and hit that bell. Lining everything up was pretty difficult because as you can see, Devonshire Street is a two lane road where today it's between four and five lanes. So in a way, in the color version, I'm pretty much driving right where those trees are on the left. Many of you may recognize cars like this today as hot rods. Well, this is yesterday's family car. What I've done is recreated this black and white. I drove roughly the same speed they were going, when traffic allowed. And then I matched the three washes along the way, which were there back in the 40s, as they are today. By using all of this together, I feel I have a close measuring point to match where the streets are today and where they would have been back in the 40s. And and if you try to find the names of these washes on the map, you're not gonna find them. I had to take the closest thing and name them myself. All right, coming up here is Lime Kiln Wash a very important marker along the way. As the San Fernando Valley grew, the city apparently decided that Devonshire was going to be a major street, so they widened it. In doing this, everything to the left, which you can't see in this video, are all orange groves. On the right, there are some homes and ranch homes. So it probably made more sense to move all the orange groves rather than to ask everybody to move their homes. <laughs> So what the city apparently did is took out every one of those trees you see on the left side all along this stretch and then widened the street. Sadly, that same population growth is what drove out most of the people who lived in the San Fernando Valley and in this area. And most of them were actors of that time. And later in this story, you're gonna find that's one of the reasons why Lucy and Desi moved out of the San Fernando Valley. It's not the only reason 
it's just one of the reasons. So far this is probably looking like a road trip, but trust me, it's not just a road trip. I'm just trying to explain and set some stuff up before I show you the good stuff. In fact, we're getting really close to the property right now, the property where the ranch house once stood. And even though it's not there now, I'm going to show you how it existed and what it looked like. Okay, now look to your right. It's going to be a little hard to see because these big trucks got in the way. But along here is the Inez property. Now granted, it's no longer the 1940s or 50s, but I'm going to show you how it once stood. Now coming up here is the last of the drains that I've used as a marker from Reseda to Oakdale Avenue because those drains were there back in the 40s as they are today. You're going to get a look of them right here in this black and white. Coming up, right there. If you look to your right, you can see a black wrought iron fence, and that's the school, which is two lots west of the Arnaz property. And here is that same property the school will be on in the future. As chance would have it, this same video is going east on Devonshire. We're looking south and there's the future property of the school. That telephone pole is where the other property of the house that is still there to this day. Now this house is the next lot west of the Arnez property. This telephone pole happens to separate the two properties from Bill Henry, a writer for Washington, and the Arnez property that's coming up. Okay, I put this on slow-mo, but you're still going to have to look really fast. Here is the ranch house driveway, that dirt path there. And coming up really quick is the mailbox. It's very blurry, but there it is. And you're going to get a close-up of Lucy at that mailbox later on in this series when we do the ground walk-around. What you're seeing is the ranch house that was built by Paul R. Williams, a renowned architect at the time. The house was built in 1940 up until 1941, just prior to the Arnez purchase. The house sat on five acres. From Devonshire to the front of the house, you can see a large piece of property. You're also seeing all this property in the back. When that red arrow disappears, that's how far out the backyard goes. And this white patch is Corbin Avenue when it was a dirt road. Lucy's mother didn't care too much for a boy that Lucy was dating to put some distance between them. She allowed Lucy to go to Los Angeles, California to start her modeling career, something Lucy wanted to do for quite some time. And here's a little fun fact. Did you know per year New York averages about 46 inches of rain and over a hundred inches of snow? Living in California all my life, I've never had to deal with any of that kind of thing. <laughs> Thanks to two very lucky breaks, Lucille Ball landed a contract with Sam Goldwyn. So she moved to Hollywood, California, and although the building or the house is no longer there, this is the lot she moved to. Before the contract deal, one evening, a painter named Ratterman did an oil portrait of Lucy in a borrowed chiffon dress from her modeling job. He sold the painting to Chesterfield Cigarettes, and overnight, Lucy's face and figure were on billboards all over town. The break that led to the contract was for an Eddie Cantor movie, Roman Scandal. He had all the girls picked out, but one backed out and Lucy got the job. As more movie deals rolled in, Lucy moved from her last location to this new location, and I was going to hide the address, but I understand her daughter Lucille has put it on her website, so I don't think it's that much of a secret. Lucy, her mother, brother, and grandfather squeezed into the modest two-bedroom, two-bathroom home. Built in 1919, the century-old bungalow has obviously been renovated, but much of the craftsmanship, style, and charm still remains to this day. Lucille Desiree Ball met Desi Dario Arnaz de Acho the third. I think I did that right. <laughs> On the set, 
of Too Many Girls. Anyway, they met on the set of Too Many Girls back in 1940, and later that year, they eloped. However, Lucille filed for divorce just four years later in 1944, but then the couple reconciled. Well, state law back then stated that they had to stay apart for one full year, but if they cohabitate, the divorce would be void. So when they bought the ranch house early 1941 and moved in together, that voided the divorce. Problems in the marriage continued though. Desi's mother, a devoted Catholic, believed that their problems stemmed from not being married in a church in front of God. So they remarried on June 19, 1949 at Our Lady of the Valley Chapel, 22021 Galt Street, Canoga Park. They bought the ranch house in Chatsworth, California in early of 1941 for $16,900. Lucy was 28, Desi was 23. Early on and before any children, I believe they used this front room as a game room where they played cards, backgammon, such like that. Over here I believe to be the front door and entrance. South of the game room would be the master bedroom. Of course these three windows represent the living room area. These two windows are the kitchen. The next two windows was used as a guest room. Further to the right, not shown in this photograph, is the garage. Okay, as I stated earlier, we're going to go from today back in time to the 40s and the 50s. Pay close attention, we're going back in time. This first arrow is where the mirror box stood, and the second arrow is the other end of the driveway that leads to a path and a walkway that would eventually lead you to the front door. In the next 15 seconds, you're going to see the change from today to the 40s. So pay special attention to Devonshire and Corbin, and those three homes on Devonshire just left of Corbin, as well as the four homes down below left of Corbin. Watch carefully, you're gonna see these homes disappear and the ranch house lot appear. Watch the transformation of the driveway slowly appear. Coming up next is an aerial walk around where I'm going to point out where everything is from the air. But first, a little bit about I Love Lucy. The lost I Love Lucy pilot was never meant for broadcast, but if you get the DVD, it is in there. The first episode, The Girls Want to Go to a Nightclub, was aired October 15, 1951. Many of you already know about the riff between Vivian Vance and William Frawley. Watch this clip where Vivian Vance and William Frawley hug each other. Compare it to all other times they touch each other. This is probably the only time they ever touched each other where it didn't look like it bothered them. I have a feeling this was before their riff. The writers had one great big burden. Desi wanted the show named after him. Many people didn't agree, but that's how they came up with I Love Lucy. The pilot episode was made only to sell the show to CBS. In future episodes, watch their hands and watch their facial expressions. You can tell they're forcing themselves, but not in this one. As I said earlier, I'm going to do an aerial walk around. It's going to be important to point out where everything is. What follows that are the pictures taken from the ground level. And when you see the arrow pointing in a certain way, that's the direction the picture was taken in. At this location, there's a remnant of what was once a driveway. I understand Desi had a bulldozer, and I have a feeling this is where he brought it in from. And this is where the cows were kept. One got sick and died, and you can only imagine how heartbroken they both were. That smudge there is the guest house, and Desi built it by hand. And here is where a wood love seat is, and behind it to the west is a garden. Between the flower garden and the guest house is where the chickens were kept. This is part of the driveway that leads into the garage. This is the west end of the house, and this is the east side of the house. If you follow those two arrows along that white strip, that's the entire house. It's pretty large. 
The front door. Over time, there were many changes. Eventually, they had three concrete slabs for patios. This is one of the main ones. This oval looking thing is the pool, which Desi built by himself. This points out the diving board. At this corner of the pool is where the steps were. In this location is what I like to call the cabana. It's a covered patio area. And I have to believe that the barbecue is back here and that was built by Desi as well. This is their neighbor to the west. Though remodeled several times, this house is still there today. This is their ranch house. In the foreground, that white stretch is Corbin. We're standing on Devonshire. Okay, now that I've given you an aerial view, a mapping, so to speak, now you know where everything is. When you see the arrow pointing in a certain direction, that is the direction the photograph was taken. I really hope you'll like this recreation. Now onto the property and a look at the cows. They originally had two cows, but one of them got sick and died. The remaining cow they called the Duchess of Chatsworth. That very first picture was on the west side of the property looking south, and this is looking west. This photograph was taken between the main house and the guest house and were facing west. The covered patio I call the cabana were facing west. Look to the right you see Desi's hammock and this is on the east side of the property. Now we're facing north and you can see the rest of Desi's hammock. Standing in the same place we're going to turn around to the south and there's the rest of the cabana. Directly over Lucy's head, you'll see that small standing fence. Their property goes way beyond that. By the way, the biggest arrow is the first photo, the next size down, and so on. The next photo. While standing in the flower garden, this picture was taken. We're looking at the love seats. We're facing southeast. And in this next picture, that's facing west. And beyond that opening, you can see the gate where the chicken coop is. And this next picture gives you a better angle of those two shots were facing northwest. Directly behind Lucy and her friend, behind them is a door. They're coming out of the west-south side of the house. This picture was taken towards the east. In that same area, you can see a better picture of Lucy's garden. That door to the left, that's the garage. Now facing north, those three windows to the right of the double doors is the living room. Those other three windows is the master bedroom. In this picture with Desi's mother, on the left are the master bedroom windows. On the right behind that trestle fence is where the barbecue is. You're facing north. This furniture is sitting on one of the three separate slab concrete patios. In the background, you can also see the barbecue on a separate one by itself. Not seen in this photo, to the right of that barbecue would be that white trestle fence we saw earlier. For the most part, both those photos were taken towards the east. Here's Lucy playing at the side of the pool. We're facing east and she is on the south side of the pool. Around the corner of those rocks is where she's at in that photo. To the left of this photo, over Lucy's head, you can see the steps far in the background. The house is to the left. We're facing east right now. In front of them are some stepping stones. In the windows to your left, you can barely see the kitchen and somebody's in there. On the right are the three windows of the living room. And this is the inside of the living room looking back out. This camera angle is facing north. If you remember in the beginning, I showed you Devonshire in the black and white. That street is passing directly in front of her mailbox. Now she's coming from the mailbox. In fact, the mailbox is right behind her back at that street fence. She's coming towards the house. However, this is a driveway. When she reaches the house she would then turn left to go east and go to her front door. Well up to now they owned the ranch house Lucy called their doll house for 15 years. They sold the home in 1956 because as you can see urban life was moving up from the south. So take one last look at the property as it was because now we're going back to the future. In this next segment, we're going to go back to the houses of today, get on the ground, and we're going to do what I call a walk around. We're going to point out where everything was back in the 40s as it is today. So watch the transformation as the houses come back to the future. And I did this relatively slow so you can see both images very ghostly and pick on some of the favorite things that you wanted to look at in both images. Oh. 
Okay, as today quickly comes into view, I'll give you a quick aerial walk around and then we'll go down to the ground and do a walk around. Because I think it'll be interesting to be in front of the houses and know what was there. Okay, first the aerial walk around. Bulldozer driveway, cow pasture and pen, guest house and playroom, flower garden, driveway into the garage, the west side of the home, the front door, the east side of the home, concrete patio for the outdoor furniture, the pool, the pool diving board, the pool steps, the cabana patio, and finally the barbecue. I have a large suspicion that many of you, when you drive down Devonshire Street, you wonder where this mailbox would be if it were there today. <laughs> Any guesses? So let me show you. And now we're going to do the ground level walk around. Okay, if we could walk right through that wall and in between those two homes, we come out at this end and we're facing north. Now we're going to turn right around facing south. Now make no mistake, that wouldn't be their front door. No sir, remember this would be the driveway and this would be heading towards the garage. They'd make a sharp left and I'll show you where the front door was. See that white fence to the right of that bush? Right there. The front door is where those arrows meet. Just think for a moment, everything you're seeing right here is their front yard. We're wrapping around and consider the fact that they have backyards. So add that on to your imagination of property. Okay, let's walk this way. We're going east. We're going to turn right to look south and we're going to see the east side of the house. That first arrow there is just to get our bearings. Now we're going to shift over a little bit more so you can see that would be the end of the east side of the house. And right there is where the barbecue would have been. Okay, once again, the house on the left is sitting where the east side of the ranch house sat, which would include the front room we saw earlier, foregoing any rooms or bathrooms. To the south would be the master bedroom. And this middle house, along with a little bit of the house to the left, are actually sitting where the pool sat. And its driveway would be the living room. Something to understand about the ranch house, its front wall came right up to the end of these homes' driveway. And that home in the distance was also built in the 40s, and it's still there today. We're going to turn left and go south. And by the way, this street divides the two properties. This corner house pretty much represents most of the driveway. However, from this angle, the inner part of it would be the garage. All right, we completed that left turn, and we're coming around the corner. We're going to go down this street going south. We're looking north, going to turn a little bit east, and right between those two two houses a little bit in the back is the chicken coop. Also at this house in the backyard just left of their pool would be the guest house. All right we're going to turn and continue going south to that corner and then we're going to make a left hand turn. Let's take a moment to stop here because the middle and back part of this house is where the cows were kept. Okay, as we continue, all of this would just be orange trees that Desi and Lucy actually planted themselves. And although we are almost completed here, there is still a little bit more to see. I hope you've been enjoying this so far. Maybe give it a thumbs up and possibly even subscribe and maybe hit that bell for more great videos like this and with that being said let's continue in a moment i'm going to come back to that curb and explain what that's about now we take a look over the white truck and see that black vehicle in the background that straight line everything to the right was their property okay where we were just standing east of that wall here is that curb I was showing you earlier. Now I believe that Desi brought his bulldozer in through this driveway. All right, at this point, at this wall, we're on the east side and this is Corbin. We're gonna turn north and I'm gonna show you all along this wall, all the way up to Devonshire is the edge of their property. This is, completes the five acres. Okay, so they sold the house to Jane Withers in 1956. 
Lucy especially hated giving up the property, but they had bought a television studio and there was no 118 freeway or a 405 to make the trip back and forth. So they moved to Beverly Hills. Now Jane Withers was a very popular child actor who retired when she was 21 years old, like a lot of us do. Though she did return to TVs and movies, she played one of the longest running continued characters on television commercials. You might remember her as Josephine the Plumber. Once in the Beverly Hills home, Lucy and Desi found it easier to get back and forth to the television studio. Lucy and Desi Jr. lived in the Beverly Hills house at the approximate age of five and four. When Lucy was driving through Beverly Hills, she saw this house. She absolutely loved this house. She knocked on the door. She asked the owners if they were willing to sell. And of course they did. And because this is about the home she lived in. I'm going to briefly show you some photos of the house that she owned in Palm Springs at the same time as the ranch house as well as the beach house in Del Mar, California. As I understand it, when Lucy and Desi bought these other homes, the Palm Springs and the Del Mar home were both vacation getaways. Upon entering this Palm Springs home, that planter is the first thing you see. Now I'm not going to get into the entire structure of this house, just going to let you see some of the photos really quick. After all, these were just vacation homes. At some point, Lucy and Desi sold the first Palm Springs home and they bought another in Palm Springs. Of course, they don't own it anymore, but I understand that you can rent it and it's called the Lucy home. And coming up are a few photos of that very house. Notice the pool is like a clover-shaped pool. It's kind of hot. And lastly, a few shots of the Del Mar home that after their final divorce, Desi pretty much retired in because he loved the horse track down in Del Mar. Something I too have enjoyed at Santa Anita Racetrack. That's all I have for you this time. I'll see you in the next one.